Hello dear viewers, my name is Nino and today we're going to take a closer look at the Okitel U22. Now the U22 is a budget smartphone, it is very cheap, you can find it for under 80 euro and even cheaper if you know where to look. And so they had to cut corners with this one, I'm gonna tell you where they are from the start with the hardware. First of all, I want to mention that this phone does come with Android 7.0 so that is pretty nice, but what it does not support is LTE so if you want your 4G internet speeds you will not get them with this phone. The next thing that I want to address is the fact that we still have two SIM cards parallel at the same time and a micro SD card which is separate from the SIM card so you can have two SIMs and a micro SD. However the official statement is that the micro SD card can be limited to 32 gigabytes max. You can't use a larger card than that. Now I have heard people using larger cards but it doesn't work for everyone so it's really luck of the draw if you can and considering that it's only a 16 gigabyte gig phone and the OS is going to take up part of your space. People who really need a lot of internal storage or a lot of storage in general are going to have problems here. The phone does come with 2 gigabytes of RAM and a quad core processor. It's the MTK6580A and that processor and RAM is going to tell you that it isn't the fastest device on the market but it is okay considering the price. The display that we have here is an IPS panel 5.5 inch 720p and what's really interesting here is that we actually have four cameras instead of two. Two at the back to in the front and these cameras individually have different megapixel numbers on them so on the back we have an 8 megapixel plus a 2 megapixel in the front we have a 5 plus 2. Okitel tells us that it will be able to output an image from the back which will equal 13 megapixel and the front one 8 megapixel. We also have 2700 milliampere battery in here it's not that much but given the phone's limited hardware it actually pulls through the whole day. Now if we take a closer look at the device itself we're going to see that there's nothing that we haven't seen before. As you can see very little of the internal storage is being taken up by the OS and it is indeed with an Android 7.0 but the phone does have its weaknesses to which we'll get. Another thing that I want to mention in the meantime though is the fact that you can download your update wirelessly from here just as it must be standard which is pretty nice but so far I haven't had any problems software wise so I don't expect that to be an issue. The operating system here is actually a very stock Android you don't have much in terms of modifications. When it comes to browsing, social media, and all that kind of stuff. This phone is actually feeling really snappy. It's gonna go pretty fast and it's gonna feel like it is a faster phone but we mustn't forget that this phone actually has less than 24,000 points on Antutu which means that it is essentially on the slower end. I always call the 24,000 the golden minimum. If you don't have 24,000 you're gonna have problems with multitasking and with graphically intensive games and as we will see later that is the case with this phone when it comes to the games. The multitasking is doing quite well but I haven't really tried to have like 30 applications in the background is just not the kind of user I am. When it comes to the cameras you're going to notice that the two cameras at the back are not really giving us much of an advantage and neither do the two in the front. The first picture is without HDR as always the second is with HDR and while the HDR here actually gives us a much much brighter result in the end it doesn't really look that good the details aren't that nice the colors seem a little washed out so it's really a matter of taste and as you can see when we play games such as Asphalt 8 the game is a high performance game and this phone is definitely not the kind of phone that we would really want to play this game on but it's still playable it's just not such a good frame rate as you can see it's quite choppy it doesn't feel very good but I think that it's still acceptable considering the low price and the specs that we're working with here I think it performs pretty okay for that ultimately the question to which it all boils down to is who do I recommend this and do I recommend this at all well if you're gonna spend only 80 bucks or less on a smartphone you already know that you're not looking for too much so this phone would be probably a pretty good solution for people who are either really young or children or people who are really old although those people usually prefer a larger screen even than that and I would say 5.5 inches become the standard norm nowadays but for children I guess it's good because if they drop it or break it it's not that much of an expense and they can still play the games that are not that intensive graphically like this one that I'm showing right now other than that there isn't much to say about the phone it performs absolutely okay but it is all in all a budget phone it is an underperformer and I'm not surprised about that so I won't be be too harsh on it. If you guys are interested to check it out, take a look at the description of this video. I'll have links to Amazon leading straight to this phone so you can see the price at the moment. And I would like to thank you for watching my videos and wish you a great day.